Hello and welcome to climbingalbrush.com So we've got a, a little test that we're going to do today So have got Sam up in this maple tree behind me that we're taking down and we're going to use a safe block and we're going to I just want to do a test to see how heavy the piece of wood needs to be for the safe block to lower down the piece slowly under its own friction without a grounds person holding on to the rigging line so what would it take for you know the shock load of a piece of wood to to start the the rigging line to move slow it down slowly with the friction of the safe block but continually lower the piece down to the ground so we we're trying to gauge like the weight that we need to to make the the chunk of wood so it comes down without the climber having to pull the rope through or without the piece of wood slamming to the ground without a groundsman holding onto it. Ready to go, Sam's put the face cut in. Um, the piece he's got is about four foot long. What do you reckon the diameter is? A foot, 12 inch and a, 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 approximately a, a foot in diameter um, do you think it'll move? do you think it'll lower? no Tom do you think it'll lower? no no so the consensus <laughs> is they don't think that this will come down um, but we're gonna try it see what happens and then if not we'll go bigger on the next one and basically get to a point where it's lowering down and nice and comfortable so all right let's go i'm quite fast isn't it all right so that one came straight down <laughs> <laughs> I guess maybe though the friction is proportional so when it's a bigger piece it like pulls on it more mate don't try and justify it <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it just needed to be smaller that was all and we thought that I don't so know that's ending back up yeah so Go like half the size if you can. Yeah. See what happens. That was about exactly what you wanted, wasn't it? Oh yeah, that, yeah, that was exactly what I was, the whole thing I was looking for, for it yeah. to do exactly that. So you could, we could put that piece in the van, you could take it home and weigh it. Yeah. Like that was like the perfect run. Yeah, because I thought when it first went, I was like, fuck, it's, this one's going to go straight as well, but then it slowed it right down, didn't it? Yeah. I think it would definitely depend, like if you had to lean on the stem, that sits out, because like this was, the rope was rubbing against the stem a little bit up here in the two spots where it comes out the back the top hole and the bottom hole and so if you did that against the lean so if the lean was going away from the safe block then that would pull the safe block into the stem more and you'd get more friction whereas if it was leaning away then you'd get a lot less friction so we're taking two pieces first one <laughs> did not go well that came flying down so that was too heavy 
Second piece came down absolutely perfect. Now the second piece was probably about half the size of the first piece. Um, a smallish chunk. And what we're gonna do now is do like a transfer of the load. So basically we've put a tying point up high in a separate tree over the other side of the path. And we're going to try and let it run again, similar size piece, to slowly like transfer the load from the tree that we're rigging down over to another area. Um, Tom is going to stay on the ground near the rigging line in case it smashes into a light, this light post that we have just here, so we don't want that to happen. So if it looks like it's going to come smashing into the light post then Tom will hopefully stop it before that happens. Alright Sam, good? If the piece is coming straight down, yeah. then the the top rope rubs on where the rope comes through these rings and adds friction on. Oh yeah, we'll add a little bit more. Whereas that was getting pulled that way, yeah. So it won't get as much friction. True. Which means it can run faster. One through the port out this time. Yeah. I reckon you could probably go a touch bigger than the first one, although you, it's, pr it's probably thicker where you are now anyway. So. Yeah. so we're going for one last test, um, and this is going to be a piece that about the same size as the first piece we took off that came down pretty hot, but we're going to put one wrap on the porter wrap, and then, but not man it and just see what happens, see if it'll come down like the last few pieces. Okay, Sammy, when you're ready. Nice one. That fucking worked perfect. Tom, is that bigger than the first piece? Yeah. Longer, boy. So that last piece came down really nice and smooth with one wrap in the port wrap. So that concludes our safe block testing um, and I found out that really interesting because I have always been uh, shocked at how much friction the safe block adds when I'm on the ground doing the rigging, like how much less friction I'm having to add at the porter wrap. So I actually wanted to see in real world testing how much the safe block would rig down on its own with no groundsman because just because of the friction it's adding so uh, we got to see that there now there's not really many situations where I can imagine you do what we did in this video and you don't have a grounds person manning the rope and you just you know rigging down um, using the, just the safe block but as we know tree tree work is throws up a different job every single day so somebody might come across the right job um, or you might have a job where you need to transfer a load like we did in the video and you only have the one groundsman grounds person um, and so it could be useful in that situation or something like a instead of a vertical speed line where you you need to keep the pieces of wood next to the base of the the trunk because you've got you're on a steep gradient or something and you need to stop them from rolling away it could be useful in a situation like that um, but the point that that really 
comes up here and that I want to cover in a whole other video because it's a big topic is you know with rigging with aerial friction friction up in the tree in the canopy um, you're not you're not having to match that that force at the base with like a friction around the porter wrap um, so you're not you're not doubling the load um, up in the canopy especially in in what we just saw when we're not using a grounds person at all we're just using the the friction in the canopy um, we're not doubling that load it's just the load in the canopy um, the load of the piece and obviously the increased force as it falls that kind of stuff but in a regular situation you would match that on the other side by um, tying it around the porter wrap so that's a whole other video that I, I will cover because um, it, it can get confusing but this um, this video just kind of kind of highlights that a little bit and when you, and it can get you thinking so yeah um, thank you very much for watching I hope you really enjoyed it I hope you kind of found it as interesting as I did it's pretty fun to do and as always I will see you on the next video Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now.